What's the better mobile gaming setup? The all new PlayStation Portal or your Apple device and a Bluetooth controller? Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and the PlayStation Portal launched with quite a bit of fanfare. It's been hard to get your hands on and people are loving it. But at $200, is this really the best way to remotely connect and play your PS5? Or is it not only cheaper, but better to download the PlayStation Remote Play app on your iPhone or your iPad and connect an external controller? In this video, I'm going to test both of these out and give you my impression and recommendation on which one of these is the best way to play your PS5 remotely. Let's start with the PlayStation Portal. What is it? Basically, it's just a remote desktop client for the PlayStation. That's it. There's no like processing power in here. You're not worrying about, you know, the graphics performance, nothing. It's literally just remote desktoping into your PlayStation and showing it up on the screen. I mean, honestly, I can go and like interface with my PlayStation just like I would if it was pulled up on my TV screen. Like there's no difference at all. And there's some audio going. Um, it's got built-in speakers, an eight inch display panel, and a DualSense 5 controller just kind of cut in half. So we have the left handle and we have the right handle that's literally identical to a DualSense controller. You can see they just kind of moved it over from one to the other. Because it is just the DualSense controller, you have the DualSense controller benefits. You have these adaptive triggers that change based on what you're doing. You have the vibration effects that are super tangible. When I'm playing like Jedi Fallen Order and like something is flying overhead, I could really feel it rumbling in my hands. It just feels really, really nice. And it's convenient because you have this one singular device, one piece, charges over USB-C, built-in speakers, really nice looking display. Just overall, fantastic single piece design that I really, really like. So what's the alternative? Well, Sony also creates a remote desktop app for the iPhone. It's just called PS Remote Play and it's free to download. You can download it on your iPhone, on your iPad and play basically the same way. Since again, it's just streaming from your PS5, there's little difference in terms of performance. I saw no difference when playing on my PlayStation Portal than when playing on my iPhone or my iPad. It was simply the same performance all streaming over my home's Wi-Fi to whatever client device that I had signed in with. Since I'm just using my Apple device though, I have a few benefits. Starting with the cost. You're out nothing just to use your iPhone or your iPad that you already have. Plus, if you have a PlayStation 5, you've already got your DualSense controller. These can be paired with your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac and you can just play this way. So I can pair this with my iPhone and basically have the same experience. And in some cases, it's a better experience. On the PlayStation Portal, there is no touchpad. There is no touch surface in the middle like there is on the DualSense controllers. So what you do is you have to swipe in from the sides, which brings up an on-screen touchpad and it's just a little awkward to be able to interact with. It's not nearly as awkward as just using the controller. The controller is far easier. So if you're playing a game that relies on that touch surface, that touchpad, it's much nicer to use a standard DualSense controller. You're also not just locked into your PlayStation games. I mean, I love the portal and there's so many cool games that I can play mobile now, whether it's anything like Jedi Fallen Order, whether it's Borderlands, Tiny Tina, like I've got a whole catalog of games that I like to be able to play and I can just play it, you know, in my hands versus up on the TV. But on the iPhone, you don't just have PlayStation Remote you can use, you can use any other gaming service that you want, including Apple Arcade. So it unlocks a lot of possibilities. You also have options for controllers. You can just use touchscreen controls on your phone. You can use a DualSense controller, as I mentioned, or the myriad of third-party controllers that also work. SteelSeries controllers are very nice. Um, I love like the Razer Kishi and the Backbone One. There's even a PlayStation edition of the Black Backbone One. And these snap around your phone and hold onto it. So it gives you a similar experience to the PlayStation Portal for a lot less money. But what about displays? This is going to be definitely a little bit of a contention point because it depends on the devices that you have. The PlayStation Portal is simply a 1080p 8 inch display, whereas your iPhone could be a 6.1 inch display, it could be a 6.7 inch display if you have like 
the larger 15 Pro Max, uh, or it could be, you know, an eight inch display if you're going with the iPad mini, all the way up to 12.9 inch when you're using the iPad Pro. So depending on what you have, your Apple device could be larger or smaller than what the PlayStation Portal offers. But regardless, it's still gonna stream at 1080p, so the same resolution. Another benefit to using your Apple device is for most things, you can just use a pair of AirPods. Yeah, you can just use AirPods to connect and listen to audio through your iPhone, whereas on the PlayStation Portal, there is no Bluetooth. So you can plug in a standard pair of headphones or you can use PlayStation's specific earbuds that will connect over its own link system and you can go that route. So this is definitely up in the air, though unfortunately you still can't use like AirPods connected to your PlayStation and use these as like a microphone and gaming setup and all that. And it's still just not going to work. So depending on what you're doing, if you're trying to do something online, it may be better to go with the Portal and PlayStation's own in-house set of earbuds. So which one is better? For me, the whole point of this comes down to convenience. That's what I want this for. It's we're watching football on the TV, my son's watching something on the TV, my wife is using something on the TV, or I'm just in another room and I don't have my PlayStation connected, but I still wanna be able to play games. I wanna play games in bed, uh, wherever it may be. And you can use your iPhone, but there's just something a little bit more tedious than having to launch the, the PlayStation app and then connecting to it, then pairing your controller to it, uh, or attaching controller around it let alone the other issues that may arise when using other controllers that aren't the PlayStation DualSense controller, uh, or if somebody like calls you while you're playing, or if you want to multitask and text somebody. Like, of course, you can turn on your gaming focus to limit notifications, but overall, I feel like it hurts the experience. The PlayStation Portal is so simple. It's clean and magical. It's just very easy. You open it up, it does one thing, connects to your PlayStation, and you're good to go. It's that simple and easy to use. The controller is nice and I can get over the fact that the touch surface interface is just really not that great. But between the two, I'm gonna stick with the PlayStation Portal more often than not. Then I can use my phone if I wanna to listen to music, be texting people on the side, or in general, just multitask. What do you guys think? Which one is your preferred device? Using a PlayStation Portal or a controller paired with your Apple device? Let me know down below in the comments. Share your opinions on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, over on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way.